Okay, so I wasn't planning on making this video, but I just got back from an exchange in Canada and I just really felt like I wanted to make a video about it, you know, sort of sharing my experience. So in the following video, I'll talk about my time abroad, address some things, some worries, maybe some pros and cons, and at the end, I'll give you a solid answer as to if you should do it or not. And as a quick side note, I'd like to say that I think anybody who is thinking of, you know, living or studying abroad can watch this video. Yes, even you, Jonathan. It doesn't really matter what grade you're in or if you go to college. I think there's some useful information in here for everybody. Okay, so... <laughs> <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Anyway, personally, when I did my exchange, I was in 10th grade. So I was, or actually still am in high school, or actually I live in Germany, so technically I attend what's called a gymnasium, but that's besides the point. What I'm trying to say is that I attended a high school while I was in Canada. So I'll be talking about that a little bit as well. But as I said, this video is not just for high schoolers. There are a few things I know you'll worry about if you go to live or study abroad. First, the language. Second, the host family, although this one not so much if you're going to college or get an apartment. Third, the friends. So, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that later, just give me. So, the first two weeks are the hardest. It's the time where the culture shock really slaps you in the face. And you miss your family and friends the most. But don't worry, stay strong and you'll get through it. Now, depending on what country you go to or how high your language level is, you'll spend around one to two months, or well, depending on how much you go out and talk to people also. Uh, th that's the amount of time you'll spend really getting to know the language, given you're like an A2 or B1 level. Yes, during this time, social interaction will be harder than what you are usually used to, and it'll be a real pain in the ass not being able to express yourself the way you want to. But by the end of it, You'll be happy because congratulations, you. you've now learned a new language and you're now able to effectively communicate with the locals. And that's a pro that's 100% worth the cons. So if you're an age like me, you'll probably be staying with the host family that you don't know. But if you're not, then feel free to just skip this part. Well, host families can be really great, but they can also be really shit. So let me explain. When I went to Canada, I got an amazing host family that gave me and my French host brother at the time a lot of freedom, while also making sure we didn't do anything stupid. But at the same time, I sometimes heard about other host families being too controlling or protective, or the family's habits were just too out there for the exchange student. Or even sometimes, the chemistry between host family and student just doesn't work out. But don't worry, most of the time, it's possible to switch host families as many times as you think is necessary. And in the worst cases, you can also always just fly back home. However, I really don't recommend that. And if you do get a good host family, which is not unlikely, then you can form a really unique and special connection with them. Will you make friends? Yes. Unless you completely isolate yourself from everyone, you'll definitely find good friends. Especially if you're a European going to North America, you'll be surprised how open people are. But if you're a North American going somewhere else, then you'll get to see that most people aren't that open right off the bat. But oftentimes they can be pretty mature and squishy, squishy on the inside. But either way, you can find the coolest people when doing an exchange, especially among the other international students. So I wouldn't worry. Just make sure to keep them open mind. Okay, Kentucker, so you've arrived. The first order of business is to get rid of the jet lag, so you can actually get some sleep. So do this by simply not having a fucked up sleep schedule. Go to bed! So as I said, the first two weeks, plus minus, are the hardest and most boring. But as soon as you make friends, time will fly. There will be so many activities and things to do as an international student, international student, you'll pretty much never be bored. You have good friends that you see every day at school. By the end of it, you'll pretty much have built up an entirely new life with new people and new hobbies. And it's so cool because by building your own life, you'll just learn so much about yourself. And by the time you're back, it'll kind of feel like you've gotten an upgrade or something, if, if that makes sense. Uh, because, like, you've exposed yourself to so many things, it's almost impossible that you haven't adapted and grown as a person. Have you grown? Furthermore, one thing I most certainly recommend to try is to do new things. For example, do a sport you don't usually do, or try hanging out with different types of people. But yeah, real quick, I definitely recommend doing a sport, especially if you're somebody that isn't from here. 
Because if you go to North America, you really get that team or, you know, that school spirit feeling you don't really get in European schools, for example. Um, but you just used Hogwarts as an example, um, and, and that's in Europe. Uh. So, yeah, that was on the side. But finally, after, I don't know, maybe six months or a year you spent in the other country, the time must come to an end. And depending on how deep your connection was with your friends or the place you lived or maybe your host family, it'll either hurt more or less. So like for me, for example, I had made really good friends and I really liked the people and the life I had built for myself. So I was kind of just there in the airport waiting for my flight, just sort of tearing up, trying to stop myself from crying because <laughs> I had to say goodbye, you know, while other international students were there, just kind of peachy, you know, happy to go back home. So yeah, either way, keep that in mind. So now on to the pros and cons. So in terms of cons, first of all, there's a very low likelihood of something going wrong and you being thousands of kilometers away from home. Second of all, depending on how good your friends are, you might lose touch with them while you are abroad. Now the pros, you learn a new language. Second of all, you make new friends and connections with people you never would have thought you can make. Third, you learn a lot about yourself and grow as a person, also becoming more open and social. And I know this one sounds kind of boring, but god damn, it's the most valuable one out of all of them. Fourth, you learn new things depending on what you do there, for example, sports or hobbies. Fifth, it's literally just a bunch of fun. So finally, I can definitely say that I recommend studying or probably even living abroad. Even if the idea of being away from family and friends for a long period of time sounds intimidating, I urge you to overcome yourself and step outside of your comfort zone in order to do and experience something truly extraordinary. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe. I like to watch that number go up. And uh, leave a comment. I might respond. Probably even. Depends on how many there are. So yeah, thank you and bye.